students, so we are back with the 10th topic in our Inuset 25 series. So today we would be discussing about MRKH syndrome. So this is also known as Mayer Rokitansky Koster Hauser syndrome. The name might seem a bit difficult, but it is actually a very simple topic once you understand the basics. So here the problem is basically with the development of the Mullerian duct. So what happens is that in this there is agenesis of the Mullerian duct. This comes under class 1 of the Mullerian anomalies. If we take the ASRM classification, this comes under class 1 of Mullerian anomalies. In this, both the Mullerian ducts are not developing. So if we have a look at this picture, the Mullerian duct leads to the development of the uterus, cervix, the upper two-third of vagina and the fallopian tubes. Whereas the urogenital sinus forms the lower one-third of vagina. The urogenital sinus will develop into the Mullerian tubercle where it comes in contact with the Mullerian duct and this tubercle later forms the vaginal plate which then forms the lower one-third of vagina. So as the Mullerian duct alone is abnormal, in this case the uterus is absent, the cervix is absent, upper two-third of vagina is absent, the fallopian tubes are usually absent but they may be present in few of the women. The lower one-third of vagina is present in this woman. As you might know, the development of ovaries is completely different. So, the gonads or ovary is going to be normal in this condition. So, the ovaries are present. Henceforth, the secondary sexual characters is going to be normal in this female. So, they will have normal breast development, normal axillary as well as pubic hair. So, these women usually present during the time of menarche as they don't have uterus, there won't be any menarche, so they have amenorrhea. As the vagina is short, they can have coital disturbance. Along with that, they are unable to conceive, so they will be having infertility. The investigation that we have to do in this woman is MRI. Why do we do MRI? Because these anomalies can be associated with other anomalies that is there could be renal anomalies and there could be problems in the development of vertebra. As you might know the mesonephric duct and paramesonephric duct are closely related and the mesonephric duct will lead to the development of the kidneys. So there could be problems in the development of kidney the most common is agenesis followed by horseshoe shaped kidney. So the most common renal anomaly is agenesis followed by horseshoe shaped kidney. There could be skeletal anomalies that is there could be hemivertebrae or scoliosis. So these are the few skeletal anomalies. The treatment in this include uh, any procedure so as to increase the length of the vagina. Either we can use vaginal dilators or we can do the surgery so as to increase the length of vagina. This includes vaginoplasty. The common one is McIndoor's vaginoplasty. The other treatment as the patient is having infertility, we can go for a IVF through a surrogate woman. As you might know by now, these women are having a normal ovary. So by taking the egg from the ovary, we can go for a surrogate pregnancy in another woman. So the baby will be genetically related to the patient herself. So summing up the important things in this is the patients have a karyotype of XX that is they are genetically females. They have a gonad that is ovary. In this the fallopian tube, uterus, cervix and upper two third of vagina is absent but the lower one third of vagina arising from the urogenital sinus is present. They can have amenorrhea, coital difficulty. So we correct this either by using a vaginal dilator or vaginoplasty. For infertility, we can go for IVF pregnancy using a surrogate by using her self eggs. Hope that makes the topic very simple and easy. We will be back again with another topic. So until we meet next time, bye-bye.